전체 공식 명칭은 아쿠안 테이턴 포인트 이 프로젝트의 기준이 되는 나이야 망실됐습니다 누가 꺼내줬을까요? 그의 같이 가자, 나라 고마워, 덕분에 살았어 방문가 우리 집에 있을 거야? <웃음> 봤어? 그냥 우리도 심플하게 이건 한번 나가자, 어? 그 기집애 지금 어딨다고? 너 정말 네가 누군지 모르는구나 아니면 그런 척 하는 건가? 반드시 제거돼야 돼. Couple other things is I apologize to Bruce Berkey for making him go the RRR route by watching basically maybe seven, uh, five hours of extra cinema, which he didn't have to. Because I got a late screener screener link for The Witch 2, the other one. Why? Because I'm such a fan of The Witch 1, the subversion, which is headlined by this really wonderful actress named Kim Demi in The Witch 1, the subversion. She plays a woman who, a young girl who escapes a big massacre in this facility. We're talking about facilities here. At the beginning, she, she, uh, she, she as a child, she escapes this facility. She goes live, she lives in a farmhouse with some lo loving, 50-something people, you know, husband and wife, and they raise her to become this really wonderful daughter and dutiful daughter. But if you know, it's not too much of a spoiler, that dutiful daughter, she has a ton of power. She is the aforementioned witch. That is the premise of The Witch 1, the subversion before we get into our sequel, The Witch 2. I was so high on this movie, the third act for The Witch 1. For me, the final 15 to 20 minute, minutes is something like on a Brian De Palma level. I, I watched the, those scenes over and over again just because of the kinetic action. I just loved everything about it. Bruce, was I too crazy in love about The Witch, The Subversion? Was I overselling it? How did you overall feel about the original? I like it. I think it's a solid, a solid movie. I think the way I would look at it for people that don't really know what they're getting into. First of all, I'd say both titles are terrible. <laughs> the Witch 1, Subversion. The Witch 2, The Other One. I don't know if part of that is... Uh, <laughs> maybe a, a translation because i mean we're coming from korean so maybe it comes through differently i think the way i look at these it's helpful to look at these is something like stranger things which has to get a whole season to get to the point it's each of these movies seems to be almost like a season of one of those things instead of a season you get to have a movie so season one of stranger things is the witch but with a lot more violence and a lot less member berries. It's its own thing. But it kind of is somewhere, yeah, it's in that it's in that middle ground, I'd say, somewhere between like a Stranger Things where you have kids being experimented on or something in a facility and they're given maybe, are they getting powers, what's going on, and trying to live a normal life and then getting sucked back into that world. But also having kind of the violence and the blood that you would not have in a Stranger Things, like way heightened in this movie. And also like there's elements almost of X-Men. There's a little bit of that going on here too. I would agree on the first movie. I really love the, there's a turn and we're not going to talk about it, but we haven't, we haven't given the turn. The fact that they have powers and stuff is kind of a known thing from early on. You just don't know what those are exactly. But there is a major plot turn that occurs, like you said, I think in the last 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. It might get to the stuff a little slow for me, but compared to an actual TV series that might take nine episodes, it gets there pretty fast. So <laughs> I guess in that sense, it's good. I wouldn't say this blows me away, but I, I, it was this is good, solid genre entertainment. I think that you watch this movie and you're in good hands and you'll have a good time. For me, it's probably uh, this first one's like a three and a half star movie. Solid, good, meat and potatoes. You're going to enjoy yourself. If it sounds interesting to you, you're going to enjoy yourself. You might even enjoy it even more than I'm selling it. Uh, and also I discovered something by watching this that I never knew before. I found this on demand 
on On Demand Korea, which is something I never even heard of before. Does it work but, okay? Yeah, it has ads. It's like Tubi or one of those other things. It's called On Demand Korea, and it was there. I don't know what else is on On Demand Korea, but if you like Korean cinema, I'm guessing there's a lot of stuff on On Demand Korea. So that might be something to check out. So if you love the action genre film with a little bit of that superhero kind of or mutant yeah. kind of situation, it's a solid recommend. Yes, a solid recommend for sure. And it's good. Uh, and once again, this is not going to be your Hollywood high level CGI. So there's a little CGI hicks and hiccups in there, but the creativity of it and the energy of it overpowers the some of the limitations and some of the effects might be slightly, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think you enjoy it because of what it gives you. Now, okay, so my, Bruce, my only concern with the Witch Two, the Witch Part Two, the other one, not mm-hmm. just its moniker, was the fact that you can tell from the trailer that Kim Dummy, the leader, the lead actress from the first film, was really barely, if or if any, going to actually be in the sequel. So we're going to have yes. to deal with another actress dealing with. She's another witch. She, there's a sort of a parallel story that she has with the original witch from from the first film. So there's going to be a there's going to be an echo as far as the the narrative and a parallel parallel narrative, and then B you don't have Kim Demi and she's so charismatic and I loved her yes. in that and it's hard to this actress it, it it's a huge shoes to fill. So wondering, just based on those two strikes that I'm giving it, how did this sequel work for you? Did it surprise you in a good way or was it a a come down for you? I think it was, to me, it was almost equal, but for different reasons. So like you said, there is a drawback because you've got, now you've got attached to this character you really like, you like the actress, you like, you know, her journey. Now you're stuck with her. You kind of want to know what happens to her and you're kind of pulled away from that. That is definitely a detriment to this movie. But this is kind of middle middle movie syndrome to some degree because I believe this is going to be a trilogy at least. It yes. looks like it's going to be a trilogy. And this is setting up the main conflict, right? So you have to have these two characters to kind of know what's happening in this movie. This movie, okay, on the draw, drawback side of this movie, this movie is a little more a little more confusing. There's a lot more plot lines to kind of follow. And I even mentioned to you, like, hey, I'm a little lost in this. What's going on? Did I miss a movie or something? Can but you imagine not even together. watching, sorry, can you imagine not even watching the first one and trying to get it? No, get, you, you can't. You need to watch the first one. But it does come together. Now, on the plus side for this movie, I think the scope is bigger. And it builds more lore. And it's a little more cinematic. And some of the set pieces are bigger than the other one. And I think that some of the set pieces here are equally as good, if not even a little bit better. Once you start to see all the different characters, there's at least three moving parts, three major moving parts in this movie. You've got the the witch, the, the other one. <laughs> yeah. And I love her introduction is really good. And there's some really cinematic moments with her and kind of learning what her powers are compared to the other witch that we saw in the first one. I'm going to say too many other witches. So you get her, you get a, a group of these powerful, I don't know what you call them. Transhumans uh, or something. They're like, yeah, they're, like yeah, they call them ex, ex people or whatever you want yeah. to call them. Yeah. And then they're out to find her. And then there's kind of a, another group that's out to kind of find her. So, and there's even like these uh, gangster types that are involved too. So there's a lot of moving parts in this one as well. But I think as they start to kind of thread together, the last, I say, third of this gets very satisfying for my so, taste. There's also a brother and sister, and they're yep. they, they, they lost their parents, and they're they're oh here's another farmhouse. This is a different farmhouse from yeah. the original <laughs> one. My goodness! And look, there are so many moving parts. There's a, you know, like you said, there's a group of uh, maybe not officers but investigators, and they're trying to they're do gooders as well. But they some of them have powers, and some of them speak different languages, and. Couple. Uh, one of the big subtractions is there is there are some cheeky moments where there's some banter. Mm-hmm. When you start writing us over at fi- info at find your films, one of the complaints will be more Eric, more Bruce, and less banter from Greg Sirzavosti. And that's what I found wrong with. Thank you, Eric, for, for that kind nod. But um, the Witch Part Two, the other one, I just felt there was just too much cutesy banter. Just get to the action, get to the story, get to the narrative. We don't need this cute. Did you was that annoying for you? These little moments aside, or were you cool with it? Like, hey, that's a nice breather for me. I, I was with you on that. I think they were probably the least necessary characters. Like, I could have probably lost those characters and kept everyone else and been okay with it. But yeah. it was okay. I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but look for for you, three and a half stars for the original. Are you giving this movie three and a half stars as well? 
Yes, I think they're both three and a half stars. I think they work a little bit differently, but I think they're both equally, especially if you like the first one, I think you will like this one. I think you'll feel satisfied by this one, and I think it will make you want to watch the third one, the So, witch... which is the kind of the goal, right? It's right. to give you some entertainment and to make you want to see what happens. And I can imagine the third one being the best of the three. Part one, the which one, the subversion, it, for me, was a five-star banger. I, it's one of these things where I liken that to my love for Raising Cain, directed mm-hmm. by Brian De Palma. It's one of these, I don't know if everyone will say five-star banger for the subversion, version but i loved it so much this one was a slight come down for me but still four stars for me i love i love this whole universe so much the lead actress not as charismatic as kim demi but like bruce was saying this is in even though these are similar stories it goes different directions and i liked the way her character the second witch was actually developed so yes maybe not as telegenic or as charismatic as kim demi but this actress does a really good job with the role she gets to play and ultimately it comes together at the end. Finally, one thing I really loved about The Witch 2, the other one, it could have gone the same way as the, the as the original, but there is something that happens towards the end of the movie that you said, oh, wait, what just happened? Okay, that happened. And I give credit just for the storytellers for actually going through with that. It makes sense yep. in the end. But yeah, they could have gone the safe route. And when filmmakers, storytellers decide to say, hey, you know what? F you audience, we're just going to do something different and we're going to pull the rug. And there was some rug pulling in a good way for this movie. And when these movies, these movies that are essentially kind of superhero movies in a way, when they have actual consequences, it makes them matter more. And if MCU and all these movies are starting to cut that away, they're not having any consequences anymore because they have multiverses and blah, blah, blah. I think it's something to be learned with these kind of movies that you get some, you build some actual stakes if you have some consequences that actually matter in these movies. Bruce, I passionately agree with you, and I'm sure Eric Holmes agrees agrees with you regarding this MCU, DCU reference, but I'm trying to get us monetized, and I'm cutting that right now <laughs> as we speak. All you're going to is like, MCU, I love it. MCU, I love it, MCU. <laughs> yes. I ha- And they're all, and here's a big reveal, all of these Bruce Perky drops are voiced by Eric Holmes. Dun, dun, dun. Would that, be, that would be the ultimate twist <laughs> in my perverse story about how we eventually get monetized by the evil uh, that, you know, the evils out there. Anyway, you, you want me to give you a quick sound drop? <laughs> okay. I love Disney. I love MCU. I love DC Universe. Very good, Eric Holmes. For now you drop. can just cut that out and drop it in wherever. <laughs> very, very good. Okay, so those are our featured reviews. With this, and the good, here's the good news. This episode only took about four and a half hours. What, what else are we going to talk about? 